If you've been keeping a close eye on the Classic WoW development, then you probably already know about the phased content schedule. Maybe you've heard about content phases from other videos or streamers, or maybe even forums or Reddit. If you don't know what content phases are or are still confused about them, then you've come to the right place. We're going to go over the different phases of Classic WoW content, why this whole system exists, and what it means for Classic WoW. This is the first installment of my supplemental series, a more casual format to inform about things less integral to your direct play experience, or more complex things in general. Let's go. A key tenet in the design of MMOs is that they change over time. The developers will add balance updates, hotfixes, bug patches, and most importantly, content updates. If Blizzard gave us all of the content from the final patch of Original WoW at release of WoW Classic, then the game would be over quite quickly. It would be hard to do certain content, most specifically raids, because you'd have to find 40 people who are not already past said content. That said, I personally don't think this would be a 100% game-breaking problem if it were the case, which it's not, though it would make the game way less fun. Thankfully, Blizzard has implemented six content phases that will be progressively implemented as the game goes forward. Once we start talking about what is in each phase, all of this will make a lot more sense, I promise. However, before we jump right into it, I want to make some things clear first. We don't know when phase 2 or 3 or so on will start. Blizzard doesn't even know yet. They have a general idea, but they want to gauge how quickly the player base is clearing content and how much of a specific raid or dungeon is being done to make a good estimate as to when to implement the next phase. This is actually very similar to how MMOs often get patches, and will contribute to making Classic feel like an authentic experience from 2004 and onward. Also to note, this will happen game-wide. This is not something that will happen server to server. So when the game updates to be in Phase 2, everyone playing Classic will be playing Phase 2. Last thing I want to mention at this point is that the development team have no intentions of balancing spells, abilities, classes, or item. Not at the beginning, and not in any phase. They said they plan to keep all stats as true as possible to the final 1.12 patch of Vanilla WoW. So, now, let's talk about exactly what is in each phase. We'll start with phase 1, of course, which will take the longest to explain, but just hang in there for me. Back in the day, patches were defined by what they added to the game, being a new system, a battleground, a dungeon, or a raid. And when we talk about raids, we generally talk about tiers as well. So we start at phase 1, which would be the tier 1 raid, Molten Core. Onyxia, as well, is a single boss fight, 40-man raid, and it drops tier 2 headpieces, but it will be in release just like it was in vanilla. At release, we will also have a dungeon called Maradon, which originally came in patch 1.2, the second patch. Phase 1 will also include a system called Layering. This is actually quite important, but I'm going to try to explain it as quickly as possible. This topic has been talked to death at this point, and I don't want to be that hashtag classic WoW content creator that beats this fucking corpse past its pulp. Extremely simply put, each server will be split into layers, which are kind of like servers within servers. When you log in, you are logging into a layer of a server. The only way to change layers is by going into a totally separate instance like a dungeon, or by joining the party of a person who's in a different layer. This way, when on release, when we have a bajillion people packed into the six starting zones, it won't be as crowded. Though I'm pretty sure it's still going to be impossible to complete any starter zone quests. Over the course of phase one, as players spread out over the world and the entire population of the whole game isn't only packed into six small zones, the dev team will start to decrease the amount of layers per server. Personally, I really like this decision. You're reducing the amount of people you're in contact with at the very beginning because if you didn't, there would be objectively too many people. Trust me when I say there is such a thing as too many people. I have been a part of the Nostalrius PvP launch, PvE launch, and Zethkur launch. They are all shit shows. On the PvE launch, my leveling team actually never dropped below the top 40 highest level characters until about level 20 when we inevitably took breaks to sleep and all that. This video isn't about my life, let's move on. Point being there, even if you're in the top levelers, it is still a shit show. I thought it was really fun, but it's still a shit show nonetheless, let alone all the problems we had with lag. The people you do see in your lair, you will see again, as it's still the same server overall. I've, I've already unintentionally talked this to death. The important part of even mentioning it is when phase 2 comes. In phase 2, layering will no longer exist. Everyone on the server should be part of one cohesive server. The reason this is important is because phase 2 introduces the world bosses named Azurgos and Kazakh. They're basically like raid bosses, but out in the open world, meaning that everyone, regardless of faction, will be competing for these world bosses. It's really important that layering isn't in effect at this point, as it would kind of defeat the purpose of world bosses being in a open world, right? The competition would mean much less if there's multiple spawns. Also, the dungeon Dire Maul gets released in this phase. Dire Maul is what we call a catch-up mechanic, meaning that it is a dungeon that has pretty damn good gear for people who haven't been playing on the bleeding edge of content. 
And finally, in phase two, we get the honor system. This allows you to start accruing rank for getting kills in world PvP, and rank allows you to buy PvP rewards such as gear and items. Following this in phase three, we finally get the battlegrounds. Warsong Gulch is a 10v10 capture the flag game type, and Althrak Valley is a 40v40 massive map tug of war, similar to a game like, say, Battlefield. These are much more reliable ways to get honor and PvP rank. I'm probably not going to talk too much more about PvP in this video if you're still confused and or intrigued. Maybe we'll go into that some other time. Phase 3 is also important because it introduces Blackwing Lair, the second real raid, aka Tier 2 raid, aka the place where we get Tier 2 gear, aka the real Marky Mark. In Phase 3, we also get the Dark Moon Fair, which is a week-long fair that happens once a month. Players of any level can participate. It's fun, great, bring the family, spend money on games, and earn prizes such as buffs and consumables or even gear at some point. In Phase 4, we essentially get bigger and badder versions of the things that we've already gotten. We get four new world bosses, the Dragons of Nightmare, which will function just like Azure Ghost and Kazakh. We also get another catch-up mechanic, except this time instead of a dungeon, it's a 20-man raid called Zolga Rub. ZG has great gear, and it's got five-piece gear sets, but it doesn't have full sets, it's a 20-man, it's got no attunement, so we really don't consider it a tier. No fault to CG, though, it's personally my favorite raid. We also get another battleground, Arathi Basin, a 15 vs 15 conquest style game with 5 points of interest to capture and defend. Phase 5 is pretty simple, it's on Courage, or AQ for short. AQ is split up into a 20 man and a 40 man raid, we refer to them as AQ20 and AQ40 respectively. AQ20 is sort of a catch up mechanic in the same way that ZG is. Similarly so, both AQ20 and 40 do not have attunements, instead there is a server wide event called the On Courage War Effort, where everyone on the server may contribute to his or her own faction by turning in trade goods or crafted goods to specific NPCs in an effort to help open the gates. However, because AQ40 does have full gear sets and is a 40 man raid, it is considered tier 2.5. Along with the theme of 2.5, or you know, 0.5, this phase will be introducing tier 0.5. Yeah, sounds weird, hear me out. When you hit level 60, the next big thing for people to do is 5 man dungeons, right? These dungeons drop dungeon blue sets, otherwise known as tier 0. Well, as it turns out, in this phase we introduce Tier 0.5, which is a set of quest lines that upgrade the Tier 0 gear from blues to purples. This is mostly for people who don't have time or interest in raiding and want even more reason to clear 5-man content. Plus, 0.5 tier gear pretty much always looks awesome. And finally we have Phase 6, Nax Ramus. Nax is the final 40-man raid in vanilla and it has the most difficult attunement in the game and is considered Tier 3. On top of this, we also get two consistent world PvP events. Eastern Plaguelands has the Game of Towers, where you fight to maintain four points of interest to gain area-wide buffs and such for your faction. And Silithist has the Silithist Must Flow, where players race to find and turn in Silithist, which spawns around the map, for a map-wide reputation gain buff for your faction. Again, more on PvP at a later date. So that's phases. Again, the devs don't know exactly when they're going to roll things out, but this is the order in which they will be rolled out. I feel like this is a very important thing to know when getting into WoW Classic. There's probably a lot of people out there concerned that this game will be a big fad and then die out quickly. I disagree with every fiber of my being, and the phase content schedule plays a primary role here. By the way, the pictures for the content in each phase were taken from a post on the barons.chat forum website. Fun site, super great. Link to those pictures are in the description. Hope you guys have enjoyed this supplemental, and I hope this gives you a better idea of what you're getting into when you end up playing Classic. Thanks for watching.